I just want to record this if that's okay, just because it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, throw it on, man. Okay. Let's do our intros Perfect. real quick. Okay. okay, let's do our intro. All right, so my name is Andrew. I am the stake pool operator of Ad Astra Stake Pool. Uh, occasionally, I make YouTube videos for Cardano. I've been really busy with other stuff lately, so I haven't, I haven't released a video in two or three weeks, but I will be releasing a video in the next week. Hi, my name is James. I am a stake pool operator for Maximum Mint, ticker A Mint. You can see us at cardanomint.com. I also release content, uh, basically uh, news articles that are pertaining to Cardano. Uh, we have a YouTube channel as well. Andrew and I have been working together for a long time and uh, we're just helping everybody get uh, news of all of the evolving things that are occurring in the network and a lot is going on, um, just as we're talking about. In fact, I think our topic today is going to be uh, third generation Cardano and DeFi and how it's going to affect people selling and buying their crypto during the parabolic, parabolic run. Okay, so <clears throat> James reckons that... Um... Uh, during the parabolic run, this crypto parabolic run that's coming, that people who have Cardano will be incentivized not to sell because of the staking rewards that you will receive from Cardano. Want to elaborate on that? Yeah, that's correct. So if you think of the previous parabolic run with Bitcoin that happened about uh, well, in 2017 when we started it, uh, the major move was piling into Bitcoin, having it ramp up, and then everybody had no real use case for Bitcoin at the time. And so they sell high, hoping that as it goes down, they can buy low and accumulate more. Um, this is uh, one of the biggest problems uh, with Bitcoin is the fact that it does these huge ramp ups and then these big old declines. That's a first generation blockchain. We also have Ethereum, which is second generation that has smart contracts. And so there was more of a motivation for people to hold on and earn income through the movement and use of those smart contracts. Well, now we have our third generation crypto, which is Cardano, and we have DeFi that is implemented. And so my question is, is do we think that people are going to be interested in letting go of Cardano once it reaches a very high point when they're receiving these interest returns? Because the whole point is to accumulate more over time, right? Right, Andrew? We're like, that's what we want to get. We want to get more and more and more over time. But if it goes to like $5 and you're earning 5% and you have a bag of like 500,000 Cardano at $5 and you're earning 5%, are you really going to be quick to sell? You've basically got a money-making machine that's pumping out um, almost uh, an amount of money you could probably live off of. So mm -hmm. are you going to really sell that to accumulate more or just start utilizing that, those interest returns and keep your Cardano? This is a big question and it hasn't happened before. So what do you think, bud? Yeah, well, I mean, if the price goes up to $5 and it stays at $5 and it just remains at $5, then I definitely wouldn't sell. It would just be a money-making thing. You would just live off your rewards uh, or at least make a lot of money off just your, your passive income from your rewards. But um, like, you know that the price doesn't stay at $5. The price doesn't stay very high for, for very long. There's definitely a bear market in this crypto world. So there's a, there's a bull run, usually uh, 12 to 18 months after the Bitcoin halving, which happened about three, three or four months ago. So right. there's supposed to be a bull run uh, end of next year, maybe the beginning of uh, 2022. But then after that, there's, a, there's like a two-year bear market until the next Bitcoin halving. And so... Wouldn't you rather try and sell your ADA when it's high so that you can buy more ADA when it's low and then you can go back into the staking game and start earning staking rewards again? Yeah, and I guess those, that's a really legitimate option is to try and sell high so you can accumulate more so you can even get more staking rewards. But you have to consider the people that already have 5 million or 7 million. You... 5% return on a $1 ADA when you have 5 million is a lot of money. It's enough at that point to you could literally live off of that. And so you have to wonder, there's going to be a percentage that won't release their ADA because A, they own so much, B, the price has gone up, and they're earning a way better interest rate than they could ever earn at a bank. 
So we have to consider there will be a demographic, there will be a group of people that will be motivated to hold on to their ADA versus sell it as soon as it peaks out. And um, they'd probably even be willing to let it drop up to 50% before they'll bail out, depending on how much ADA they have. But uh, I really think this is gonna be a, a, a slight game changer on how ADA maintains its price. I don't think people are gonna be as quick to sell because of the benefit of the staking rewards. It's just a reality. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next bull run. Yeah, and it's something the to bull consider. bull run is starting. Like with, with yes, Bitcoin, Bitcoin going up to 18,000 and then coming back down a little bit. And then eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna to break its all time high. And then it's probably going to fall down a little bit. And then it's going to start, start its steady ascent upwards. And then it will break its all time high for a second time and then just keep going. And um, yeah, I wish I bought some Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. That, that's true. And so that's, that is really what we're looking at specifically um, when Bitcoin is going to start its run. And you and I agree that it has started to begin its movement upwards. And, you know, we recorded a talk and I don't think it ever made it onto YouTube, but there was, uh, we talked about it and I said, we're going to be looking for those words all time high. Yeah. Once we start to hear those words all time high, that's when everything is going to start to kick off. And I just read in an article like three weeks ago, Bitcoin is starting to touch on all time highs. So um, everything's moving forward the way we think it's supposed to. Uh, could we see a decline in Bitcoin? Could it uh, touch back to like 12,000 or 14,000? Chances are slim, um, especially with all of the hype and uh, the time frame that we're in right now. Is it a possibility? Could, think, it could kiss 12,000 one more time, but I highly doubt it. I think we're really starting to yeah. move here. I think 14,000 is, 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 is reasonable to expect for it to go back down to 14,000. But I, I, think, I think the days of 12,000 and 10,000 are, are behind us. Those are over. I agree. Yeah, those, those, those days are over. Are over and we're, we're just looking to kind of calculate now how far this run is going to take us. And so... Um, I'll be doing a lot of homework. I'll be doing a lot of research on the movement, the volume, um, to kind of see where things are going. Plus, I'll be watching ADA for any synchronization movement with uh, BTC to see if it links in or if it oscillates. Um, that would be a, another great way to trade and, and get more Cardano over and uh, BTC. One goes up, you, you, know, you sell, then you buy the other that's low, and then you flip-flop like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be looking at the ratios and uh, I'll be watching to kind of see where this thing's going to peak out. I'm thinking we might go to 40 and maybe do a little bit of a turnaround, then maybe to 60 and then 80. Um, I don't know where this thing's going to end. It just depends on our overall volume, but uh, it's going to be an interesting ride. And, and I think this parabolic run due to the arc is probably going to be a longer parabolic run than we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we've seen like three months or four months um, you know, sometimes it spreads out, sometimes it spreads out a little bit further, but, uh, I'm thinking this one might be a longer, stronger parabolic run just because of a uh, more use case, more understanding, uh, the economy and, uh, you know, what's with the coin shortage, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in the U S we're talking about coin shortages. They're not even giving us exact change anymore. They're giving us our change on a debit card because they just mm -hmm. don't want money moving around which means, uh, you know, that that's a huge push for us. And since so we see that coming, wow. um, hold on. It, it, there's there's a coin shortage in the U S yeah, wow. there's a coin shortage in the U S they will not give us exact change anymore. They'll give you your change on a debit card. But mm -hmm. if it's like, if you buy something and it's 1259, mm -hmm. they're keeping that change or they're going to give you the change on a plastic card that you yeah. can use at the grocery store later. So yeah. really weird. It's, it's really weird because I'm, I'm from a small Pacific Island country. Well, I'm half, I'm half that and a half Scottish, but from my Pacific Island country, they've also got a coin sh shortage, but it's a tiny country. So I always thought, okay, well, you're not going to get this problem in these bigger countries, but here in America, they, they've got coin shortages. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to wonder after all this time, who's been eating up all the coins or where are the coins going? Because yeah my whole life, my whole 47 years on this planet, I never heard of us running out of coins. Yeah. So, uh, 
you have to wonder if they're more motivated to just kind of get people out of hard money and into mm -hmm. digital currency. And if that's happening, that's probably not the worst thing for us. Um, it's definitely interesting. It, it has some sort of meaning and we're going to have to figure out what that is. You guys could just get rid of pennies, you know, get rid of your, your, your one cent coins. Um, in True. Australia, they do that. They've got rid of their one cents and their two cent coins. So it's just five cents. Five cents is the lowest one. And they just round it up or round it down, depending on. Yeah. And the funny thing is we've seen this type of stuff before in other countries or in earlier time frames, And this is all a sign of us moving um, out of that hard money and into a digital economy. And with the devaluation of the dollar, we, we, I think we should expect to see some form of digital dollar coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, what else are they going to do? Yeah. Okay. So maybe we should move on to the next topic, which is the K value. So yep. IOHK have, have announced recently that the K factor is going to be set to 500 in December, yes. and then it's going to increase to a thousand in March. So what right. that effectively means is that at the moment, the saturation point is 210 million ADA. So if you're delegating to a pool that's over 210 million ADA, um, your, your rewards get diminished. But with this new K value coming into effect on the 6th of, of December, uh, that saturation point is going to be 64 million ADA or, or about 64 million ADA. And then in March, the saturation point is going to be about 32 million ADA. So yeah. it's a real push to try and get more stake pools to, to have sort of an equal amount of, of ADA delegated into those stake pools and have uh, more, more people basically more decentralized. That's the word that I was looking for. It would just be a lot more decentralized so that instead of a hundred pools that are, that are um, taking the, like most of the ADA and staking most of the ADA, it's going to be distributed to a lot more pools. And I think it's a good idea. I think it's, I think it's the right move. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, obviously, the, the algorithm starting at 150 was the initial um, uh, number. Uh, you know, they didn't want to be too overzealous and start out with like a thousand pools and then have nobody show up to the game, right? Yeah. But we did. We, we had a thousand pools show up to the game. And so they're making these aggressive adjust, uh, adjustments sooner, which is great for smaller stake pool holders. Um, and, uh, and now that I think think i i kind of feel like there's more of a unity there was a recent video that uh was launched where we were talking about large corporations starting to enter the network and they're building multiple pools and they're being really aggressive on their uh, pricing um basically like when walmart came in and destroyed all the mom and pop shops yeah you know they they underprice everybody hoping that most of the delegators will jump onto them and then the other stake pools will die out uh, fortunately, IOK, IOHK has uh, jumped on this and they've adjusted the rules. Um, you know, increasing the, uh, the K to 500 is one of them. Um, also, there was some, uh, there was actually some confusion on ANOT, which is the pledge that a, uh, a stake pool operator puts on their node. And uh, what we recently found out was uh, that anything between 10,000 and 1 million will yield pretty much the same block result. We thought that a not had a larger role in uh, producing blocks, but the fact of the matter is, is if there's a stake pool operator out there and he's got 10,000 staked on his node as a pledge, uh, you're gonna get as many blocks as you would get with somebody that's got anything between uh, 10,000 and 1 million pledged on their node, which is fantastic. Uh, so we, we, that gives smaller stake pool operators a chance to get in the game, get set up without having to worry about being uh, outbid if you will, by larger pledges from uh, stake pools that have more funds, more liquid funds. So that's also to our benefit as well. So we're seeing a lot of, a lot of positive movement in the uh, direction for decentralizing the network and preventing large stake pools from entering the space and succeeding. Um, but we also need to remember that it is important for larger stake pools to uh, bridle themselves, I guess I should say, and creating multiple stake pools. Um, I'm reading an article now from IOHK that literally categorizes that action as a civil attack. Um, large pool operators creating multiple pools is considered 
um, in an article that I'm, I'm actually going to release really soon on my YouTube channel. Um, it's a civil attack, and we need to make sure that we do our best to decentralize the network, um, support other state cooperators, um, make sure there's good information out there, and, uh, and most importantly, I think uh, protecting your node, uh, protecting your state pool, making sure you're following all the security protocols, making sure that you're uh, you know, doing everything you need to do to keep your node up so that it doesn't become a tool that an adversary can use to manipulate the network. Which leads us to our next thing. I just wanna, I just wanna congratulate these pools. Hang on a second, I'll exit. So the Cardano Foundation recently, like they moved their stake from every three epochs, they moved their stake to a different to different stake pools, and yes. they recently today they just moved it to. Hang on a second. Yeah, they moved it to. Well, they've just listed down their tickers here, and their tickers are a bit strange. Sage, Viper, Atlas, Genki, K9K, Latam, Thrive without an E, um, ADAVs, and One Japan, and AO Oz. Okay, some of these aren't words, but. Congratulations to these guys. They have each got 64 million delegated to their pool from the Cardano Foundation. Um, this is how many pools that are benefiting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 10 pools benefited from this. But with, the eight, with K moving to 500 so soon, wouldn't it be better to divide that 64 million to like again. So instead of benefiting 10 pools, it could benefit 20 and each pool gets 32 million ADA. So that way these pools aren't already oversaturated once K moves to, to 500. What do you think about that? Yeah, it, it, it's an actually a really interesting move and it's so generous and it's so wonderful that they're doing this. I mean, it, it really is a maximum effort to to get you know, some balance into the network. And so by saturating all of these smaller pools, they're really leveraging um, some smaller pools to kind of gain a little bit of a grip on what's going on. Um, you're right. Uh, is it a great idea to max out uh, these pools or would it be a better idea to distribute a little bit more evenly over a few more pools to kind of create a wider base? Because you and I know the inevitability of this network becoming saturated uh, just during this next time frame of about a year or two years, it's probably pretty good because as people start to get more wind of Cardano and as the price starts to increase, as the gravity of Bitcoin pulls everything up as it usually does, uh, we're going to see the smaller pools naturally saturate. Um, the only difference is, is the smaller pools need a little bit of an edge. Um, a 64 million dollar edge is a great edge. It, it's the complete edge. Uh, but you're right. I think if they were to um, divide the load, even quad it, um, instead of just cutting it in half and fixing 10 pools, why don't we cut it in half and fix four or cut it in a quarter and fix 40 pools mm -hmm. and uh, give everybody, you know, like a $12 million uh, a delegation, which as you know, once you get over the million dollar mark, you're really producing blocks, uh, pretty frequently and your node really becomes a machine of production at that point. Oh, so uh, I don't know, yeah. it is generous, but I wish they would spread it out a little further. Sorry, Andrew, yeah. what were you gonna say? Oh yeah, it would be, it would be 16 million um, uh, spread across uh, 40 pools, which I think is, is very that's, good um, considering good. that K is going to move to 500 and the saturation point is not gonna be 210 million, it's gonna be 64 million. Um, for them to be already at 64, it might, it might um, persuade delegators not to delegate on that pool because they would already be saturated. So I think it might be a good idea for Cardano Foundation to consider maybe splitting that up to, yeah, cutting it in half or cutting it in, 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 four, in four quarters. Um, if it, it was quarters, it would be 40 pools that benefit and each one of them gets 16 million ADA. And that is, that is enough. That is enough to, to be continuously minting blocks and to, to build off. So yeah, if anybody from Cardano Foundation is listening to this, maybe you might consider this, these, these ideas. 
I'm sure you guys have already thought about it, though. I mean, it's not. I'm sure they have. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, they, they have a they have a larger grasp of the bigger picture. At least I hope they do. And if we're offering some good information that they like, please take it. You know, I mean, it's it's only going to benefit 30 more potential pools. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I just my goal is to spread this information. I know your goal is to educate. And we really are going to work hard to see this network uh, thrive and grow. Um, we're just looking for, you know, the most efficient way we can do that. And that, that's why we talk about the things we do. And that's why we share the things we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to, to, to bring up another topic, but it, this is a bit of a surprise topic. I haven't, I haven't, it has nothing to do with Cardano or not too much to do with Cardano, but um, Kaizen Crypto, he tweeted out saying that he reckons that Bitcoin will become the world reserve currency and that it will be, uh, used on and, and Cardano will be its blockchain. Like he, he um, uh, cause, cause Bitcoin's not just the currency. It's also a, a, a blockchain, but it's a blockchain that is from the first generation. So it has some flaws to it. And what you can do is you can wrap Bitcoin tokens and put them onto, uh, well, put, put yeah. a corresponding version of it onto the Cardano blockchain. So it would be like wrapped um, Cardano uh, Bitcoin that can then use the Cardano blockchain as if it was as if that token as if the Cardano blockchain was native to to the cryptocurrency itself. So um, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I thought that was an interesting thing to think about. What do you think about that? Do you think that that's ever a possibility? Or do you think that the Bitcoin miners will rally against any ideas like that? No, no, um, I, I definitely don't think it'll be seen as a negative on any network. Um, you know, this, this idea of uh, creating the, so we have ADA, which is the actual coin, and then we have Cardano, which is the network. The blockchain. And Cardano, yeah, yeah, the blockchain network. And so what we're doing is we're creating these ERC-20 converters that are going to allow all coins to reside on the Cardano network natively. And so they've been tinkering with this with hot swaps of Bitcoin and Litecoin and doing other things in, in this space. But uh, Cardano was fun, is fundamentally built this way. In fact, I know for, I know for sure that uh, smart contracts from Ethereum will be able to natively port straight over to Cardano with no modification, which is a big deal. And uh, they're, they're touting um, Cardano as the internet of blockchain because the whole premise of the design is to allow other blockchains to ride on top of it. And we're also looking at Cardano to help stabilize other chains by, by utilizing it to confirm uh, the, their blockchains to prevent against 51% attacks. So I really see Cardano anchoring in um, almost like an octopus. It's just kind of putting all of its tentacles into all these other cryptocurrencies to aid in stability, to uh, help with speed and uh, transaction times. Um, I, definitely see, I definitely see this coming. Um, I think it's an inevitability and I think it's going to be well received for all cryptos. Um, it's only gonna be a helpful component and uh, Cardano is going to be delivering that really soon. So yeah, I don't see any fight against that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think there would be a fight. <laughs> I think the yeah. Bitcoin miners, yeah, the Bitcoin miners who are who are mining Bitcoin, they're not going to mm -hmm. want to see their their Bitcoin tokens get ported over to Cardano, and then then when it's when it's sent between people, that uh, fractions of um, like the gas fees are paid in Bitcoin to the uh, stake pool operators of Cardano. You know, it wouldn't be paid to the the miners, miners. Of, of Bitcoin. So I think there would be a a clash at some point. You know, they're going to rally against that and not like that idea. Um, or maybe yeah. one day they could they could try and figure out how to do what what Ethereum is trying to do, which is Ethereum is trying to move from a proof of work protocol to a proof of stake protocol. And they're already facing a lot of uh, challenges with that. But right. maybe one day Bitcoin does the same thing. Absolutely. I mean, we already understand the concept of proof of stake versus proof of work. Bitcoin is that proof of work protocol. Um, uh, Ethereum is 
is a proof of work switching to a proof of stake protocol. But like you said, there's a lot of modifications that need to happen in there. And then we have Cardano, which utilizes Ouroboros, which is fundamentally and always has been a proof of stake protocol. So we're more efficient. We use less energy. We do it faster with these protocols um, and we scale because of this protocol. So um, it would almost be a benefit if we wanted to keep Bitcoin moving to port it on to Cardano to keep the cost lower um, for Bitcoin, because obviously there's a cost component when you're, um, when you're doing proof of uh, stake or excuse me, uh, proof of work. And, uh, and so this could actually help leverage Bitcoin in a way to where it becomes more cost effective to move Bitcoin from place to place. I don't think it's going to hurt Bitcoin. I think it's going to make things easier for Bitcoin in the long run. Uh, because when, uh, as it gets larger and those transaction fees go up higher, it, people aren't going to want to move their Bitcoin around unless they have some other means to do it. Mm -hmm. So wrapping Bitcoin in Wrap Cardano Bitcoin. may be a benefit. Yeah, that may Maybe be a benefit. benefit. There's already wrapped Bitcoin in, um, in Ethereum. So yeah, right. Ethereum's already got wrapped Bitcoin on its network. But uh, yeah, Cardano will have that capability pretty soon. It's going to have the capability, I believe, to run almost every um, uh, cryptocurrency with a use case. And uh, I'm looking forward to that because as a stake pool operator, we're going to help facilitate those transactions. Um, and so we need to be ready for it. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to be something that's coming for us. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we conclude there? Yeah, I, you know, I think I think it's a lot of information. This is a yeah. lot for everybody to absorb. And um, I, uh, I think if you guys uh, want to keep up on this stuff, it's constantly evolving. They're releasing articles on a daily basis. Please check out um, Andrew at Astra Stake Pool and check out Cardano Mint, uh, Maximum Mint. And uh, check out our uh, YouTube channels because we are releasing this content as quickly as it comes out to try and get it to you guys so you can make educated decisions on what's going on in the blockchain. Um, if you guys need to reach us, contact us on our prospective Twitter and YouTube channels. We're definitely both responding. I know I'm looking for, uh, I, I, my goal is to help people learn how to acquire crypto, uh, build a wallet safely, send and receive crypto. And I'm, what I'm noticing is a lot of people do not know how to do this. They want to get into this space. They just can't. For those of you who are interested in getting into the space and you want to do it safely, please contact me. I will get back to you personally and we will go through all the safety protocols to make sure you can acquire your crypto. And, uh, and that's really important. Okay, great. See you later. Andrew, we good? Yeah, I think we're good. All right. All man. right. See well, you. Thank, thank you so much for having us on and uh, we'll do this again. This is fun. Yeah. Take care. I'm just going to stop recording now.